Alright guys, so I apologize for how the last video ended. That was an editing error on my part. I'm sorry about that. Anyways, we ended the tournament with 12 pounds. I think 14 and a half pounds won the tournament. We came in fourth place out of like 20 something boats. We did get some money back, so not a complete fail. Anyways, if you enjoyed that video, I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Sorry I left y'all hanging. I apologize about that sincerely. What's going on everybody? My name is Kyle Welcher and thank you for clicking on my video. I've been making these YouTube videos for a while now and people that have been watching my videos for a long time know kind of the way that I do things. I don't really like cut any corners. I don't waste any time and I tell you all the truth. And if you're new to the channel, I hope that's what you find that I do as well. Basically, in this video right here, we're gonna make, we're gonna be, it's gonna be called the Truth Series. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through every single technique, every single style of bait, like whether it be crank baits, top water, spinner baits, chatter baits, worms, creature baits, everything, we're gonna go through it all. And I'm going to tell y'all what you need to keep in your boat and nothing more. We're going to do an absolute purge on your fishing tackle because everybody keeps too much crap in their boat. So all these people that are making recap videos and, you know, tips and tricks videos right now are usually have a lot of sponsors they have to answer to. So what it ends up being is a constant plug of whoever's making the video becomes a constant plug of their individual sponsors. And I don't have any big tackle sponsors to answer to as far as soft plastics go or crankbaits or stuff like that so I can tell y'all exactly what I believe to be the truth so in this video series that's what we're going to tell y'all now keep in mind fishing is in itself a series of decisions and what we believe to work is just a you know like our past history reflects on what we think is going to work in the future so keep in mind everything that I do is what has worked for me in the past if this is not stuff I've read in a magazine this is stuff that I've actually put you know fourth in real world applications on the water and it's what I've had work for me so keep that in mind you might have to you know deviate a little for your home lake or whatever but these things work for me all over the country I will see y'all in a minute and talk about today's subject all right guys so in this episode of the true series we're gonna be going over top waters it is that time of the year right now it's early May they are starting to bite top water the bass are garden fry the big females are pretty much done spawning for the most part and I'm gonna show you what I do to keep my top water approach very simple but very effective also and I the, the whole purpose of this video right here is trying to purge out all the stuff that you don't need I mean as far as People keep way too many colors of all these different baits, and really you don't need that much. You just need to be really efficient, have a ton of confidence in the baits you're throwing, and cover a few different you know, scenarios with the fewest amount of baits as possible. So I'm gonna show you what I do. Now, first and foremost, you watch my video for very long, you know the number one top water I throw is a dang Spro Poppin' Frog. And I almost always use it on the same exact rod. I use a seven foot six heavy with a 8.2 to one gear ratio reel, 60 pound braid, and the standard popping frog. Now I keep these in a couple different colors. I keep them in usually white, I keep them in black, I keep them in you know just a few different colors depending on what basically the water color is. That's what I deviate for. I deviate if I'm in a shad spawn, I'm always gonna throw white. If I'm fishing for bluegill, I'm gonna throw more of the uh, greens or the blacks or stuff like that. So pretty much, I keep it pretty simple. The biggest thing with a frog is I wanna throw this, I wanna be able to skip it under docks, skip it under lay downs, skip it under bushes, throw it over any kind of matted stuff. This is just a four wheel drive top water. You can throw it anywhere. The problem with it is, is it is a little bit bigger and more aggressive of a bait so it's not a really good finesse style top water so this is one I'm gonna throw whenever I'm really power fishing I'm really rolling I'm really covering water and that's my go-to frog rod right there seven foot six like I said but you don't have to have a seven foot six frog rod you can throw it on a seven foot three medium heavy you can throw it on a seven foot three heavy a seven foot whatever you want to do you can get away with it just if you're throwing on a shorter rod don't make quite as long of casts because that will come back to bite you eventually so moving straight on to the next one that's one of my favorites the old buzz bait this thing is caught fish forever and will catch fish forever you can see i've got a horny toad on the back of this one that's what i throw on my buzz bait almost always for a couple different reasons number one it helps me skip the bait number two when the fish bite it they seem to get it a whole lot better when you've got a bulky plastic because the way a fish's mouths work when they open their mouth they have like a suction and if you have a skirt right there there's nothing really for them to suck and pull into their mouth but if you have a big bulky piece of plastic when they you know initiate that vacuum seal in their mouth they'll suck that plastic in they get the hook a lot more often so this buzz bait is something i throw whenever i just want to cover water rip wrap banks sea walls throw it up beside docks i'll skip it under everything this is just whenever i'm putting the trolling motor down first thing in the morning and i am rolling i pick up a buzz bait another thing that i pick up and throw on this exact same rod right here so this is a seven foot three medium heavy 
50 pound braid and obviously the, the, I use all K9 braid. This is actually 60 pound nine strand. It's the same diameter as most 50s, but I like to throw a seven foot three medium heavy because I can still launch this thing, throw it a long way, but the braid is has no strip. So I like to throw a medium heavy so the rod loads a little bit better and I'm not gonna bend my hooks out with braid. So another thing I throw, let me unhook this thing right here. I throw this whopper plopper on the exact same rod. The only difference with the whopper plopper if I'm paralleling banks that are a little bit deeper, bluff banks, you know, standing timber, anything like that that's right on the bank, I'm gonna go to a whopper plopper, especially if there's a rocky bottom. For whatever reason, it seems like this whopper plopper works better in really rocky lakes. So this thing right here, I'm visualizing it, calling fish up from eight to 10 foot deep a lot of times. This buzz bait is a little more finessey when the fish are shallow, I'm gonna target them with a buzz bait. When I'm trying to call them up, I throw something a little bit different. And this right here, you throw on the same medium heavy rod with braided line and a fast reel. So keep this in white and black, and that's pretty much all you need. And same thing with the buzz bait. White horny toad, black horny toad, green pumpkin horny toad, that's all I throw. So that is these top waters as far as just covering water. Now, what we're getting into now is, well, I'm gonna show one, one more aggressive top water, then I'll show you the more finessey stuff that I do. So I keep Sammy's, you know, all the time. I, I don't throw them as much as I used to, but I keep them in my boat all the time. And for the most part, I keep really translucent colors. And what I'm trying to do with this is, I'm trying to make a big disturbance on a super long point over deep water. I'm not gonna throw these up around shallow cover. That's just not what I do. I'm gonna throw a frog, a pop bar, a prop bait, or a buzz bait around shallow cover. This right here, long flat points, making super long casts. I will usually throw this on like a 30 or 40 pound braid just so I can throw it super, super far if the fish are schooling. And I only keep translucent colors. Now for the most part, I have some other colors in there that I never throw, but translucent colors, cause I'm gonna fish these in clear water, deep water, and I'm gonna try to call fish up from a long way. And when they get up there to see it, I don't want them to think it's fake. I want it to look as natural as possible. So same exact rod, seven foot three medium heavy, a little bit lighter braided line and launch this thing. Just make sure the rod loads well cause you usually got a little bit lighter treble hooks on this and you just gotta kind of fight the fish. So now from there, we go straight to what is the underrated type of top water in my opinion. Nobody really seems to talk about these too much but a small prop bait and a small little pop bar. Now, usually if I'm gonna fish brim style stuff specifically, I'm gonna throw a prop bait. So I only keep these in brim patterns. A pop bar, I'll throw in like a, any type of a shad pattern. I'm not a big believer that when a bass eats this, they automatically think it's a bluegill or they automatically think this is a shad. I just think it's the right size, the right presentation, and a decent color so they will eat it. I don't think they think, oh, that's a frog, I'm gonna eat it. Or I had a frog yesterday, I'm not really too into that today. So I think they just see this the right size, the right style, the right action, and they eat it. Presentation is number one, color is second. So basically, I keep this right here in bluegill all the time, and this in shad, like I said. And what I wanna do with these is, late in the day, whenever the bite gets a little bit tougher, There'll be a lot of shade lines on a lot of these sea walls. There's a little bit of uh, drains and stuff that'll have some log jams, some brim beds and stuff like that in it. And I'm gonna pull, pull these out on 14 pound monofilament. I usually use a six nine to a seven foot three medium fast rod. I go with a fast rod, it just helps me cast a little bit more accurately, but I like a medium so whenever the fish bites it, it really loads up on these really light treble hooks. And I throw monofilament on these just so it's a, it just gives a little bit more and it's a little bit more invisible to the fish because I'm gonna fish these extremely, extremely slow. Another thing is, braid will get tangled up around the hooks a lot more often than monofilament. So, like I said, whenever the sun gets up, there's shade lines. I throw these around dock posts. I just work them super, super slow. I like to, you know, fish these on sea walls and stuff like that in open water, around brim beds. Whatever the bait is that I see, I'm gonna throw these two around it whenever it's a little bit tougher and I gotta go a little bit slower. So that's pretty much all you need for top water all year. I'm sure you've got your own personal one that you just think is, you know, you can't live without it. And if you've got confidence in it, by all means, throw that sucker. But this right here is all you need, literally five or six baits can cover your top water needs for the entire year. So don't forget that. And that's what this whole true series is about. None of these baits I'm sponsored by. So, you know, I throw what I actually think is the best. So if you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, hit that subscribe button, go down in the comments and let me know what subject you want me to break down and I'll tell you the truth about it. So as always, I appreciate you watching. My name's Kyle Welcher. Thank you for checking it out. Leave me a comment, hit that like, hit that subscribe button. We about to go fishing.